Is there not an entire section on this subject? Yeah. No, yes, I may have changed my mind in the meantime on that, so it's unfair. I may have, I may have changed my mind about Mithra, for example. Is, is, your, is your book for sale about it? Yes, sir. What have you ever asked God for forgiveness? <laughs> I'm not sure I have. I just go and try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. Let me tell you, 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 let me this is obviously you're you're going to notice this is a day early, um, and it's it's a one topic show. Uh, I tried to do this episode two or three times over the week, and I've gotten so frustrated and just lost train of thought and and so on in in trying to walk through this in a in a I don't even can't even think of the word I want to use a just a consistent I guess I don't know just to, to it's so frustrating with me so obviously I mean well maybe it's not obvious obvi no I'm talking about Ahmad uh, Arbery the man in Georgia who in February months ago was shot down in the street um, died while being video taped recorded um, and then the video was leaked just recently and, uh, and this came to light. No arrests had been made. Um, nothing had really been done with this until the video was leaked. Um, and then of course, outrage and, uh, action happened. These men were arrested. Greg and, and Travis, McMichael were have finally been arrested <laughs> and this case is going before a grand jury we will see um, you know ch that they're being charged with murder there will be a trial we will see this play out we will see whether or not justice is going to happen in this case however you feel that justice is so I've tried to like I said I tried to do this video or this podcast twice this episode actually three times and scrapped it every time because just the frustration that builds up trying to to navigate this this maze of is it racism is it uh vigilantism gone bad is it you know uh what it what is it so today Apparently, or yesterday, another video comes out showing Ahmad Arbery going through a um, a house that is being constructed. So, an unfinished construction on a house that belongs to somebody. Um, and he went hour or so before he he's murdered. He went through there, walked through for five minutes, came out empty-handed. Um, and so now this is this is being put forward as the reason why all this has happened. So now I chose not to show the video again of him being killed because we've all seen it. I mean, it, the, the one video on YouTube has been hit 1.6 million times. So 1.6 million people or so have seen the last 36 seconds of this man's life played over and over potentially on on loop. I didn't want to do that again. I can't do that again. I cannot watch this video again. But, and I almost just decided not to do this episode to make it just a, uh, a, a point in my regular episode that'll come out tomorrow um, and, and, and move on and, and lump it in with some other stuff. But I knew I needed to talk about this specifically. I could not put this in the same episode as the uh, hairdresser in Texas who opened up her, her, her 
salon early and went to, went to jail because of it. I couldn't put these two together. This is this is too important of an issue to to relegate it to one point in a three point podcast. So I needed to talk about this. And then when Candace Owen tweeted this out earlier to, today, yesterday, that solidified it for me. I have to talk about this. So Candace Owen, which I really, I like her a lot. 97.5% of things she and I agree on. But this was the tweet that she sent, she sent out. Ahmad Arbery was caught on camera breaking into an unfinished property that was owned by Larry English. His mother has confirmed it is him in the video. Please stop with the, quote, just a jogger, unquote, BS narrative. Avid sh- joggers don't wear khaki shorts and stop to break into homes. Okay, for, so one, I mean, let's let's just deal with initially he didn't break in. This is a building that has no doors on it yet. Should he have been there? No. Was it his property? No. But that, again, and now Candace has has tweeted many other things qualifying the fact that, no, she's not saying he deserved to die for going into this. She's just trying to, again, I, I don't know what she's trying to do with this. This is what happens anytime we have one of these situations. We saw it in with... Michael Brown, we saw it with Tamir Rice, we saw it with Trayvon Martin, we saw it with Alton Sterling and Eric Garner and Freddie Gray and all of these these men who have committed some kind of a crime or not actually, but given the appearance, I mean, Tamir Rice was out with a toy gun, Trayvon Martin, we don't, he, he went to the store to buy some stuff to make a drink of weird whatever. I don't know. Michael Brown committed a crime. Ultimately, Alton Sterling was doing something that, whether you call it a crime or not, should not have been doing. But that does not, none of these men deserve to die for what they did. Period. And of course, that's not what Candace is saying here. But on first blush, that's what it seems like. And any of these situations, this is what we get. We get either one of two things, and Candace did both of them. We either get statistics or what ifs. And I, actually, I don't know if Candace did a what if uh, hypothetical thing, uh, but I've seen, I've, I've got cousins that, that did it. We get the what ifs and, and, uh, and the statistics. So Candace gave us all kinds of t- statistics. I can't say the word, it, it's in early in the morning um you know white men are killed twice as often by black men as as black men by white men so black men are far more likely to kill black men than than white men to kill black men so that's not this situation and that's not helpful again all that does is it makes it seem like you're justifying what happened here and that's not justifiable and the what ifs, again, the what ifs that just drive me crazy. I hate what ifs. Well, what if it were two black men and it was a white man? Okay, one, it wasn't. Two, yeah, I agree, the black guys would probably be under the jail by this time. But two, it's not relevant to this situation. Well, what if it were two black men and a black man? It would just be more more just like Chicago fodder for conservatives and right wingers to argue when another situation like this happens. How come there's no black lives matter in Chicago when people are getting killed? That has nothing to do with this situation. Stop. Well, what if it were two white guys shooting a white guy? Well, we don't know because that's not this situation. And it doesn't have any bearing on this situation. Is it wrong that no arrests were made for two months? Absolutely. These men should have been arrested a long time ago. Trial should have happened. All this stuff should be done by now. So it's tragic that that never happened. But it's pointless to do what ifs. This is not 
two black men shooting a white guy. This is two white guys shot a black guy. Was it racist? Sure feels like it. I can't say yes or no. I don't know. I haven't heard any testimony, anything like that. But it sure seems a little sketchy. Now again, if they knew that he had been in this house, it's not their house. He did not he did not trespass on their property. That gives it gives them no reason to grab guns, get in a truck, and go after this dude. Would they have gotten their truck and gotten after him if he was a white guy? We don't know. Maybe he would have. They would have. If they were two black guys, would they have gotten in their vehicle and gone after this guy because they saw a video or something of him going into someone else's house? I don't know. I don't know. Honestly. I mean, we can't because what ifs don't do us any good. You know, we can do hypotheticals forever, but the reality is this is the situation as it happened. A man lost his life and the final 35 seconds of his life has been seen millions of times. And rather than, and again, I mean, some people have, were praying for his family and so on. Now, granted, this is a, such a weird situation because this all happened months ago. And so it's not like it's fresh and, and we, we're like, okay, there's still this mourning period. Now, there's no li limit on how long a mom is going to mourn her son. But there's, you know, usually there's an amount of time where we go, we're not going to deal with this. Now is a time that we can deal with it. It's been months since this happened. So much more should have happened in the time frame. So, it, it, and again, because the video was just leaked, it feels so very fresh. It feels like you want to go because, I mean, mom, his mom is gonna, has had to relive this stuff over and over and over in the last week. What she did months ago... And I, I can't imagine that a mom has put it all behind her in a couple of months. But now it's fresh and it's new again. And we should just, we should literally be just praying for his family. And not throwing out statistics of how many people got shot in Chicago this week. Black on black crime. It's not helpful. Not helpful in the least. We need to see what is going to play out in this scenario. But as I watched that video, I got angry. I was sad. I cried watching the video. Because we should not. This is not something that we should be doing. Watching the, the last 30 seconds of a man's life over and over and over and over again. And half of the people that probably watched it were not affected at all. No emotional response. I would say a huge, uh, I don't want to say a huge majority, but there are people because of just the, the manner of, of, of media that we live in, see this with no emotional response. I praise God that as I watch this, it, it affected me emotionally because I know I'm still human. But how many times do we see stuff like this and it doesn't affect us? I mean, that, that, that's just a, that's a side point. But again, we, we, we get so much of this that goes on. And, and so thinking about this, I mean, Kirk Kennedy, quoted, he, he tweeted the other day, um, I don't fit the description of a crime. I fit the description of your fear. And there's a valid point to that. There's literally a valid point to that. I've seen it. I mean, I've, I've been, I'm the guy that, that, that I've always felt like I've been down. I'm down with the, with, with that community. Right. I mean, in the hip hop crowd, I have so many of my friends on Facebook and stuff like that are, are in the hip hop community. And so I know the the vibe but i don't know this but i've seen it i mean i'll never know what it's like to to be black i'll never know what it's like to have the fear that that some of these guys have that just going out to to i mean i've watched it over and over with my friends my black friends expressing this you know 
wives that pray for their black husband every time they leave the house. My, my wife doesn't pray for me like that every time I leave the house. But I've seen, you know, I've seen, I've walked down the street with a black friend and watch the people who cross the street. They ain't crossing the street because of me. They ain't afraid of me. Women don't clutch their purses because of me. But I've seen it happen with my friends. So there, there's a, there is a truth to that. that. That black men are feared. And so it's not that they fit the description of the crime. They fit the description of your fear. And it brought back to me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the video because I really want, there, there's so much in this one song. Again, and it, it's by Kurt Kennedy, that I, and it's valid to this. I mean, this was years ago he wrote, did this song. I mean, it, it was put up two years ago off of the C4 album. I think maybe that album's three years old. I, I have to go back and look. But, I mean, it's been some time. But this is still, I mean, that was during the Michael Brown situation, but yet we still are dealing with this and, and, and there has to be a, a solution and, and he talks about it. So I'm going to play this video and then we're going to finish this up. So here's Kurt Kennedy. Um, this is Justice off of the C4 album. Trying to wrap my head around it, like I'm Hindu. I partially relate because of all the stuff I've been through. Chopping in my toothbrush to make it like a Ginsu. Cause the enemy's friendly, you never know who is against you. At least when you're in prison, you know that this place is evil. No matter how gangster they look and it's all see-through. But you never are prepared for the mother gangsters is lethal. They could put some bullet holes in your people the size of peepholes, uh. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. They scream mark of the beast, pointing at the police. The people are restless, saying they feel molested. It's hard to have drive when driving could get you arrested. Pull over, but who's wanting to stop unless it's multiple cameras and people they're willing to watch? But even then, there's no guarantee that you're living. If the cop got itchy fingers and swearing your hand is twitching, uh, everybody's on edge. Like we all on the ledge, the nation's in dispute. Like, is this true? We're just all in our heads. Man, that dude is a thug. He went after the gun versus now the cops started shooting. Then he started to run. Two sides of a story. Everybody's debating, but, um, have we all forgot that they just lost a son? For a knack with a punishment doesn't fit the crime. And even people that kill people at least get prison time. And it hurts to see people have respect for the Jews, but tell us to get over it. Like we sick and just got the flu. Many people are stressed. Are you seeing this mess when it's not even clear what it means to resist and arrest and it's deeper than that the historical track will show a lack of sympathy for blacks while we're under attack and the church oh the church don't even get me started a bunch of arrogant leaders who saw problems with blogging no justice no peace no justice no peace it's been so long but it feels like it's just us and it's peace no trust in police, at least for many of us. No, if we die, we don't multiply, we might march and cry. Maybe some rise to show we tired of dying at the hands of men who get repositioned. Even when lying or pride, criminal record doesn't justify getting shot because you talk back to the guns. Man. You can't be doing this alone. Just when I thought I was out, be back in. Like we the victims was minding our own business And police just started tripping We out obeying the laws and was chilling and such But I got a gun in my waist And some crack in my butt And I'm beefing with some dudes When I see them, they gonna die But be the first to say police brutality is too high I know more dudes that kill dudes that look like me Than police evidence And what is true or more likely Is that I'll die by a black man before a white cop And if I do, there'll be no rise No news covers to watch No neighborhood saying enough Holding some signs 
signs up. There'll be people who know who killed me, and they'll still shut up. Even though my baby's crying, my wife's eternally dying. We lie in the stitch in this works, and the crimes and the violence. Are you kidding me? Our crimes against one another is genocide. I'm trying to use this mother and this big as it can open your eyes. It's just us for the peace. It's just us for the peace. Most of the beefing in the streets is just us for the peace. You don't trust the police. Well, I ain't trusting you. I see it in your eyes. You don't sympathize. Where's the love in you? You quick to kill the dude. If he's accidentally touching you and boast about it. So everybody knows there's a thug in you. You made it difficult to see that we shall overcome. And all that ever seems that we see is we're under the gun and black lives matter. Yeah, I agree. But do I emphasize the slogan when they holding guns at me? Am I supposed to be proud to be gangster? At least admire that. Should I teach my sons how to hold a gun and then fire back? Should I tell them that they are so off and they get their education? But they could play with the cities in the gentrification. Should I tell them that it's never their fault? That police saw the blame when they sin and get caught? Nah, that's not the answer. But I'm glad that I got one. And I can trust them more than any streets or a cop with a gun. I can trust them more than ballistics or witnesses to come. The blood on the street is what's talking. And he's hearing the young. I trust him with my life. He gave his own as his passion and took away my sin. They know Indian give and ask him. A lot of people laughing, committing the same sin. So I'm calling them rerun because they really don't see what's happening. Uh, that he's justice and peace. That he's justice and peace. He must decrease and not decrease because he's justice and peace. He sees the truth that you hiding behind your badge and you hiding behind the fact that you know you ain't had no dad. It's sad because you promote being murderous like his manhood and then blame society for saying that they playing her. Do you be abusing authority because you got some weight in the agitate till it escalates then you shot one. But he will judge it all perfectly. Let me state that because y'all clowning around. But homie he don't play that. Remember not the block is hot but hella scorching. Until then I must remember I'm not an orphan. Alright we're gonna it's the end of the song. The video goes on for a couple minutes but um so yeah I mean <laughs> If you haven't heard the C4 album and Appendix and um, Philosophy, you got to go get Kurt, Al Kurt Kennedy's last three albums, man. Because, I mean, it deals with all this stuff and consistent Christian worldview, looking at both sides of things um, and, and understanding that, that there is an answer. You know, we get so much flack when we, you know, these things happen and we, we start throwing up, you know, thoughts and prayers. And so I don't do thoughts and prayers. I pray, you know, don't send your good thoughts because they're worthless, but prayer and don't send your prayers to me. Pray to God, you know, don't send pray prayers, uh, Ahmad's way. No, pray to God for his family for his loved ones, for the situation, for the leaders in this country, for the, uh, for the justice system in this country to be right and just because it's not always. Pray that God would put his hand on these things. But we catch so much flack. What, uh, all you want to do is, is, is thoughts and prayer. I would rather just pray than jump to conclusions. I would r rather start with that. And the willingness just to, to mourn with those who mourn and pray for those situations than jump into conclusions and looking like a fool. Because I'm sorry, Candace, but that tweet, you look like a fool. Now, I, I, there, there, there's validity to that. But the fact that he was trespassing... And I know you didn't mean it this way, but it appears that you are justifying what these white men did. There's no justification for what these men did. And, and you know, we can discuss the, the, the gun charge he had back in the day and so on. Those have no bearing on the fact that he was murdered in the street. But we can pray for that situation rather than jumping to conclusions. And we can look, as, as Kurt talked about in that song. I, I don't know the answer, but I'm glad that I've got one. And I can trust him more than a cop with a gun. The gospel of Jesus Christ, Jesus will judge everything rightly when the time comes. And his gospel 
can I mean is it is it going to put an end to racism no because people will reject that gospel but had these men the McMichaels been saved and they may claim to be Christians but here's the deal Christians who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ in the death, burial, and the resurrection who have repented and put their faith and their trust in him do not grab guns, get into their truck, and go hunt down a guy who did not even do anything to their own property. Somebody has an overdeveloped sense of vengeance and does not understand the gospel, does not understand the Bible that says vengeance is mine, saith the Lord has an over over developed sense of authority that means thinks they have the authority to go out and exact justice no yes people called 911 that should have been left for the police to handle might have ended up the same way we don't know but we know that two men with no authority got into a vehicle with weapons, went out tracking down the man that they thought somehow wronged them and killed him. People who understand the gospel don't do that. How will they know unless somebody is sent? And how will they know unless they hear? We need to go and preach the gospel. Again, and we can't play what ifs. What if these guys had heard the gospel a long time ago? Would this have happened? I don't know because they didn't. We can't play what ifs. We can only look at what now. Quit looking at the uh, what if and, and, and if, it, if it were somehow different. Look at the situation as it is and say, what do we do now? We pray for justice to be done. We pray for God to be glorified. We pray for his family to be saved. We pray for the family of these men. If they go to prison, we pray that they hear the gospel and are saved. That's what our goal is. And again, I'm going to catch all kinds of flack because, well, we just can't preach the gospel. We got to do something. Preaching the gospel and praying is doing something. And then there are other people that are out trying to do whatever it is, protesting peacefully. Let's not burn down our cities because of this. That doesn't do any good. But peacefully protesting, doing so, yes. But my, th my what my, what God has called me to do, is to preach the gospel and pray for the situation, and that's what I'm going to do, rather than jumping to any conclusions, making myself look foolish. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust Jesus, who is going to ultimately make all these things right. And justice will be served. And he will mete out justice perfectly. And if God requires that some kind of justice be given to a mod at Arbery. Because he walked into a house. That will happen as well. And when judgment comes. But these men should not have taken into their hands. And been the ones to execute judgment. On him because they had no authority. But what we do, rather than reacting politically or emotionally, I mean, we have emotional re responses. We can't help that. I hope we all were emotionally affected when we saw the video and when we look at the situation. I hope our emotions cause us to pray and share the gospel. But we, we don't make this a political issue. We shouldn't be making this a, a I mean, and I kind of hesitate at it because it very much seems like it is a racial issue. But we as Christians should be looking at it with a much broader scope. And ultimately it does come down to the same thing every single time. And that is this. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words they're necessary. Pray for Ahmad's family. Pray for the McMichael's family. Pray that God is glorified in all of these things. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria. Mm -hmm.